Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game by Paul Morphy. And in this chess game Paul Morphy has the white pieces this time and his opponent is Saint Leon from Paris. So Morphy made a trip to Paris in 1863. He was at Havana, Cuba as you know in 1862 but a year later he went to Paris. He could not go back to his home, New Orleans, because of the civil war as you know. So this was also a must-see chess game by Paul Morphy, a must-see classic romantic chess game. And in this chess game, as you can see, Paul Morphy surrendered his knight on b1. He is playing with the knight handicap. So let's check out what happened in this chess game. A must-see chess game, an epic chess game. Paul Morphy starts the game with pushing the pawn e5, f4. The king's gambit accepted, developing g5, bishop to c4, and pushing the pawn, attacking the knight. Well, Paul Morphy is not defending the knight and he pushed the pawn. Unbelievable. And Black thought that, oh, this Morphy guy, this Morphy dude, is a crazy man. And he simply captured the knight, happily. And then Morphy captured the pawn for the quick activity. But remember that Paul Morphy already sacrificed his knight from the beginning of the game. And he's sacrificing his second knight. So we can say that this was a double knight host chess game by Paul Morphy. Bishop to h6 and Paul Morphy castled, developing the queen, pushing the pawn. Queen to g7, bishop takes on f4, bishop takes on f4, capturing the bishop. And there is pressure on f7. The bishop, the queen and the rook is targeting the pawn. Defending with the knight, lifting the rook by Paul Morphy. Rook to g8. Attacking the pawn and threatening checkmate. Rook to g3. Attacking the queen, queen to f8. And then capturing the rook. But now in this position, Paul Morphy is targeting the pawn. Once again, rook to f1. And the pressure is on f7, so defending with the knight, knight goes back. And is Paul Morphy running out of pieces? Was this over aggressive chess game by Paul Morphy? What would you do in this position? Well, Paul Morphy would like to attack on f7, but now he's not black's knight, he's defending on f7. Well, Paul Morphy thought simple, he wants to get rid of the knight and he pushed the pawn, threatening to play g5, and after defending the knight, bishop takes on f7. So d6, pushing the pawn, but now Paul Morphy pushed the pawn again. The pawn is pit. If you capture the pawn, queen takes queen. So f6 and g5 by Paul Morphy. The pawn is pin again. Queen to g7, pinning the pawn, but now Morphy captured the pawn. Is this over aggressive or not? Capturing, we will see. Knight goes back, rook to f7, c6. And rook to g7, attacking, knight to e7. Well, black really doesn't have any time for developing his pieces. All of the moves of Paul Morphy was threatening something. So rook takes on h7, king to d8. So Morphy was threatening to check the king. And the only defense was with the knight. So king to d8. Actually, knight to g6 was the better defense, rook to g7, knight to f8, e7, and still white has some threats. Also, Paul Morphy's two double pass pawns is also looking extremely dangerous. So, in this position, rook takes on h7, king to d8, and then rook to h8, checking the king, king to c7, and now attacking. Well, Morphy is playing risky, of course, but maybe he knew that his opponent was not that strong, so... He was playing risky. This is why he was playing with the knight hoods in the beginning of this chess game. This was so impressive and exciting by Paul Morphy. Chess entertainment, 100%. So, pushing the pawn. Attacking the bishop, but Paul Morphy captured the knight. Rook takes on e7, attacking the rook. And then, also the bishop is under attack, so Morphy is defending the rook. But also attacking the bishop, we see d takes on c4, capturing the bishop. If bishop takes on e6, then bishop to d3. Actually, bishop takes on e6 is a good defense, but now, again, Morphy's pass pawns is decisive. How to defend? 
It is looking dangerous for Black. So in the real chess game, after moving the rook, capturing the bishop. But now Morphy captured the bishop. Rook takes on c8. King takes pawn and then pushing the pawn. Morphy's pawns are marching. Morphy was playing with very little pieces against his opponent. But all of his moves was threatening something. And his opponent couldn't find the best defense. This is why he is losing. So after moving the king, rook to g8. And this is losing. How to defend the pass pawn? How to develop the knight? This position is simply hopeless for black. And this is why Paul Morphy's opponent resigned at this moment of this chess game. What an incredible chess game by Paul Morphy. He sacrificed his pieces from left and right. Without blinking his eye. And then he crushed his opponent. A classic chess game by Paul Morphy. Well, this position is simply hopeless. And I think you can figure out how black is losing after this position. So thank you very much for watching. This was Paul Morphy Classic, a Paul Morphy Classic from 1863. Thankfully, in 1863, Paul Morphy played more chess games than in 1861 and 62. So Morphy also played a match with Derivere, one of the strongest European chess masters at the time. So I hope to see you next time with more Morphy chess games in the future. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.